There's never been a better time to be a lover of music technology. The advancement of making music with computers has all but eliminated gatekeeping and given nearly everyone the opportunity to make something incredible with just a laptop and a doll. And that's amazing. So I recently decided to make an EP without using any of it. The term dollless is thrown around a lot these days, often in an attempt to get you to buy the latest hardware sampler or groove box. And I often hear the argument made against hardware-only music that, well, you could just make all of that inside of a computer. And while there are exceptions to that statement, I generally agree. But the question to me really isn't if I could make the same thing in a DAW, it's would I make the same thing? While I often champion the ability to move things around and experiment with arrangement and composition within a DAW, I've also recently rediscovered sort of the power of limitations, refining ideas outside of the limitless playground of a DAW. And when I really stop to think about it, I've been making dollless music for a lot longer than I've even known what a DAW was. And my original setup was about as basic as it gets, consisting of a piano, a pencil, and a piece of staff paper. And funny enough, some of my best music, I think, was born out of these very limited tools. But having developed a deep love for electronic music and synthesis, sound design, and the recording process in general, I started to wonder if maybe the implementation of more extreme limitations would lead to similar, more focused results that I used to be able to achieve with my very limited bare bones setup. So I embarked upon a new musical project and made myself a very simple set of rules. There would be no computer, no multi-tracking at all, just me, a couple pieces of gear that I chose beforehand, and a tape deck to record it on. And it turns out, as I was quickly reminded, simple can be very challenging. As much as I love the freedom and flexibility of a DAW, unlimited choice doesn't actually lead to better music it often leads to unfocused music. I think that's a big part of the reason why my earlier work is a bit more focused in terms of the musical ideas themselves. With fewer distractions, I was forced to get things right in black and white. The most memorable melodies and ideas can withstand being stripped away to their core elements. If the bones are good, you've probably got something that can withstand variation and development down the road. But what about in more ambient electronic music, where we often think of the textural qualities as being an integral part of the compositional process? This has been a struggle for me in the past, and early on, my tendency was to continually add more elements, and let's face it, more reverb, and create what I thought would be a massive wash of sound. But since, I've actually discovered that it's taking elements away that causes whatever remains to truly stand out. It feels counterintuitive, but by limitation and subtraction, we actually start to reveal what we want the listener to focus on, and things can begin to take shape. Come into focus, if you will. Maybe you've experienced muting a percussion stem or another element that takes up a lot of the frequency spectrum, and notice that everything else suddenly feels louder, more present, more clear. By always adding more, we sometimes bury the most interesting elements in our music. And with an unlimited number of tracks to add in our favorite DAW, it's often hard to resist the temptation to do so. As if removing the unlimited editing potential of a doll wasn't enough, in the ultimate move of masochism, I decided to record my new EP to tape as a series of one-take performances. The idea of recording to tape and locking an idea into stone is always arresting for me. As someone who really enjoys the compositional process of trial and error, and admittedly struggles a bit with perfectionism, it's really hard for me to give up total control of that process. But in a way, it's also a bit freeing to know that whatever happens is in the past and there's nowhere for me to go but forward. This is one of the things that I found really appealing about live performance in my past life as a pianist and organist. There was simply no going back to fix things. I was forced to move on to the next challenge and forget about what had just happened, be it good or bad. This is why the art of practice and rehearsal is so important for a performer, because it's the process of eliminating variables that we might experience when we actually hit the stage. When stumbles inevitably do happen, we kind of know how to land on our feet because we've experienced so many variations of those stumbles before. This concept transfers really well to the types of electronic performances that I wanted to create. As fun as it can be to just have a jam session where you just grab a knob and see what happens in real time, I wanted these to feel more intentional 
as if I were playing any other instrument and had a full command of how to push it into its optimal space. While the musical ideas could be somewhat improvised, I wanted to have a general plan of where I wanted to go, and had practiced, through the process of setting up the patches or loops, the ways that I could get there. Music hardware can be expensive. And like most people my age making this kind of music, I started on this journey with nothing more than a DAW on a crappy computer, a cheap interface with two inputs, and a desire to learn about all of it. You don't actually have to have hardware to begin to incorporate some of the lessons that hardware can teach us. It just really helps to have a general idea of what those limitations actually are and maybe the discipline not to throw the entire kitchen sink of plugins and sample libraries in our DAW at every problem that arises. So to those who would say that you can create most of what you would create on hardware inside of a DAW, just because you can doesn't mean that you will. The act of planning around a set of limitations and physically interacting with an instrument will always lead you to a different result than you could have gotten to with your computer. That doesn't make one of them good. It doesn't make one of them bad. It just makes them different. And it's really ultimately up to you to decide which inspires you the most to create whatever it is that you want to create. If you'd like to watch the full video of the performance of this EP, you can see that in the link below. It's gonna be on my other channel. If you'd like to download a PDF about my compositional process and the way that I like to think about composition, there's a free guide also in the description, as well as some other free resources in my store that will help you out as far as getting started in synthesis and sound design. If you'd like to be part of a community of people who talk about such topics, you can join my community, which features unreleased music, exclusive video content, tutorials, that sort of thing. It's also the most direct way that you can support this channel if you would like to do so. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.